Steve has agreed to paint the bathroom. This has been on his list for a while. He's been putting it off because he's been busy at work, but he knows it's time. Internal pressure in the form of his wife is increasing and he knows he has to get this done. He certainly painted before as evident from the closet in his basement. He has some painting supplies down there, but it's been a while and the truth is he really doesn't mind painting. He's sort of looking forward to this. At this point, his cost is zero, his time is zero, and his frustration level out of 10 is a one. Steve decides Saturday is the day. He's off work and he figures this is probably about a six hour job. His plan is to do a little poking around in the paint closet, figure out what he has and what he needs, and then head off to the paint store, which is about 20 minutes or so from his house. He finds his paint clothes, he gears up, and he starts heading to the basement. It's 8 a.m. and he figures he should be done by early afternoon. Plenty of time to make his wife happy, cross this off his to-do list, and still ride his bike in the afternoon. As he opens the basement door, his wife reminds him of their son's soccer game at 8.30 and that he can't wear his old painting clothes to the game. He goes upstairs, he changes, and he leaves for the game. His cost at this point, still zero, he's got about 15 minutes into it, and his frustration level is now at a 1.5. After the soccer game is done, Steve figures he'll save some time. The paint store is only a few minutes from the soccer field. Now he doesn't really remember what he has in the paint closet, and he doesn't have time to check. So he decides to go from memory. He's pretty sure he has tape. He probably has a roller handle, a roller head. Seems like he has a cutting brush and a pan. He probably just needs paint. One quart should do it. It's now 10.30. His cost is 15 bucks for a quart of paint and $4 in gas. He's got about two and a half hours into this and his frustration level is still at about a 1.5. Steve arrives home, he changes his clothes again, he takes his paint, and he heads to the paint closet in the basement. He thought he had everything he needed to complete the job, but turns out he doesn't. He has a roller handle and a paint pan. Both are in good shape. His roller head and his paintbrush weren't cleaned properly the last time he used them. Oh, and he has no painting tape. He decides to go ahead anyway. Now, normally he would tape off the trim and woodwork before painting, but to do that, he would need to go back to the paint store, which is 20 minutes away. That'd be another lost hour. He decides he's just gonna have to be careful. He's a little bit concerned about using a roller and a paintbrush that were not properly clean, but he figures even if some of the old color bleeds through, it'll be fine, because he's using a single quart of paint, and it will, after all, he thinks, look the same. At this point, his cost is still the $19. He's now three hours into this, and his frustration level has gone up to a 2.5. Steve starts to paint and immediately drips on the woodwork. Thankfully, he bought water-based paint, but he still needs to clean this up. He needs some water and a rag. Despite his best efforts to be neat, he continues to drip paint on the woodwork because the old brush and the old roller don't absorb paint like they should. The higher parts of the wall require him to stand on a ladder. He figures it'll be easiest if he paints all the upper parts of the wall. When he's done that, he can get rid of the ladder, and paint the lower sections, and he'll be done. As he's finishing the upper sections, though, it becomes clear that he didn't buy enough paint. One quart just isn't going to do it. He's going to have to go back to the paint store. While he's there, he figures he'll pick up a new brush, a new roller head, and some tape. Now he's got $60 into this, five hours, and his frustration level is a 3.5. When Steve gets back home, he's past the six hours he figured this job would take him. Maybe he can finish this in an hour and still spend some time on his bike. But there's a problem. His wife is already waiting for him in the bathroom. His attempts to be careful in painting and wipe up any spills 
just weren't successful. There are paint drips on the counter, the sink, and most of the baseboards. He decides to fix them later. To avoid any further spills, he tapes off the door casings and baseboards, which takes another 30 minutes. He's finally ready to paint the bottom section of the walls and be done. He begins to apply the new paint, but uh, then he notices something. It doesn't match the paint he's already applied to the top part of the walls. Now it might be that he's using a new brush and roller, or it could be that the second quart of paint is slightly different than the first. Either way, it's pretty clear that this isn't going to be acceptable. The paint store has already closed for the day, so he's done. So far, he's got $60 into this, seven hours, and his frustration level has jumped up to a seven. Two more Sundays have passed. One was taken up by a cousin's wedding and the other by a business trip. It's time to get back to finally finishing the paint job. No one in this house is happy. The bathroom still isn't done, and the painting supplies have been laying around for two weeks. Because the colors didn't match, Steve has to start all over. He leaves for the paint store at 8 a.m., buys a gallon of paint, and a new paintbrush, new roller, and new roller handle. This should solve his color mismatch problem. Now he's got $116 into this. Eight hours of time, and his frustration level is crept up to an eight. Arriving home, Steve removes the tape from the last attempt, which has mostly fallen off anyway. He spends 90 minutes cleaning the paint off the door, the casing, the baseboard, and the countertop. He's gonna start fresh. With the woodwork properly protected, Steve begins to paint. Originally, he figured this small job would take about six hours from start to finish, and he was right plus the time to clean up the woodwork. Three weeks after the start, the bathroom is finally painted. He's got $116 into this. He's got 14 hours into it, and his frustration level is now a nine. Poor planning and poor project management did at least the following things. It almost tripled the amount of actual time Steve spent doing the job. It extended the project three weeks beyond when he thought it would be done. Poor management and skipping steps meant that a project that should have cost around $40 ended up costing almost three times as much. Poor project management took a project that he didn't even mind doing with a frustration level of about a one to an albatross around his neck with a frustration level of nine. And his wife wasn't happy about it either. He lost at least one of his days off trying to fix his mistakes in planning this project. Now, think about it. Apply this to a larger project that's budgeted at $1 million over three months. With Steve's project management skills, the project would come in 180 days late with a final cost of almost $3 million. The frustration level of his boss and team members likely can't be measured, although his boss will certainly try during his annual evaluation. And who knows how many days off he missed. Time with his family, trying to right the ship. This kind of added expense and time means there were huge losses and opportunities. Things like cost savings and other people's jobs, customers lost, and frustrated employees leaving. Good, solid project management matters for small jobs and for big jobs. Let's break this into its components and put them in the right sequence. Let's figure out the budget and assign the right tasks. The first really important thing, and something not enough people get, is to get away from just doing the next thing you can think of. Make a list. Organize a sequence. 
Project management is about managing a timeline. And we're going to need this because most of us will be managing multiple projects at the same time. It's sort of like spinning plates. Yeah, it's easy to do when there's only one. It's a lot harder when there are 20 plates. So timelines and sequencing really matter. The next thing to think about is doing things in parallel. It sure seems like Steve could have been doing a task or two while asking his wife to help him. A much better plan would have been, first, estimate how much paint you need. Actually measure the wall height and length. Then take inventory in the paint closet while his wife drives to the paint store. While he's figuring this out, he should be able to text his wife a list of what he needs. Maybe his wife can tape while he cuts in with the paintbrush behind her. Then roll out the paint, remove the tape, and do a final cleanup of the bathroom, the brush, and the roller. If Steve had done it this way, his budget would have been about $40. It would have been only a three or four hour job, saving several hours because his wife was helping him out. His frustration level would have been very low, and the truth is, he could have gone biking almost all day. No list. No timeline. No advice. No checklist. No team. Nothing in parallel. It all adds up to a giant mess. We can do so much better with a little planning and some project management. As the saying goes, fail to plan, plan to fail.